Trump's delay train seems to be coming possibly to an end. The, the hush money case is starting in less than two weeks. Do you think there is any chance we actually see a verdict before Election Day? Oh, I mean, in that case, maybe, but oh, I also it's think... It's a very technical response. Oh, it's so <laughs> and it's, it's the professional word, right? Yes. Most reporters know this. But I think what's so difficult about watching these court cases is that you're watching the hush money case go forward, but I actually think that's probably the one that has the least bearing on Americans' ability to vote or not vote for Trump, as if their opinions aren't baked already. But I think that things like the documents case and the Jack Smith January 6th case, in addition to what's going on in Fulton County, where you literally have the guy on tape saying, give me the votes I need to win this thing, those are the ones that I think are actually impactful, and those are the ones that you're watching him kick the can down the road on. The Stormy Daniels stuff, people have that in their brain from like five years ago. I don't think it's changing anything. And if you talk to everyone, Democrat or Republican, they agree it's the weakest case in terms of impact. So, yeah, that might be the one we see, but the ones that voters should see are the other ones. Except, of course, people think, oh, it's that case, you know, it's about his wife, it's about adultery. It's not. No. No. It is about paying someone off to hide information exactly. leading into an election. Here's my question, though, Roy. Are too many people expecting that if and when there is a verdict, Trump will automatically be found guilty? Because let's be clear, he might not be. Yeah, and if he's not found guilty then he's going to use that as fuel to go, see, I'm not guilty on this one. They're all, and what's his favorite word? Witch hunt. Mm -hmm. That'll get spread. I'm just happy with all this Trump stuff that they're finally spreading the cases out now, like Beyonce albums. You get act <laughs> one, you get act two. Because before, it was a bit of a log jam because yeah. it kept coming right. too fast. Yeah. Back in the Manafort days, remember right, that? Right, right. Yes, <laughs> I do. Now you can, pop, you can think code. about which one this actually Am is. I listening to different Beyonce, though? Because, like, they're fun, usually. I don't know what this is. <laughs> <It's fun. laughs> okay, I wanted to talk to Alex they'll see about this all week long because Donald Trump, even though his delays are ending, this guy gets break after break, whether it's the judge down in Florida, whether it's he found a guy to give him the $175 million bond or now Truth Social being a publicly traded company that could end up making him hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars. Then next week, he's got a big golf tournament with Liv also stands to make a lot of money, but Truth Social. What is yeah. your take on this, So bud? today, with the rest of the market up, it was down again. I mean, this thing <laughs> loses value every day. So yeah, it could make him hundreds of millions of dollars. But even though it's losing, it's still making him, on paper, on a paper, ton. But on paper, he's it's it's half of what it was when it, when it debuted. So one never knows how this all goes. One of the important points about Truth Social is that it's not exactly a meme stock, but it's got all the makings of it, right? It's non-institutional investors. It's not banks and insurance companies and funds and things like that. It's it's a bunch mm. of Trump fans. The company doesn't do it. anything. And it doesn't do anything, and it loses more money than we thought it lost, $58 million or something in its first year. The, the interesting thing here that you pointed out to me the other day is that it's partnered with another firm. The largest shareholder in that firm is also the largest shareholder in uh, ByteDance, Dance, TikTok, TikTok yeah. uh, richest man in Pennsylvania, Jeffrey Yass. And it's just a little, the whole thing's a little bit weird. This is a guy who wasn't that into Trump in the first place. He's not supported him historically. And now all of a sudden, that's all of a sudden, this deal was in the works for a long time. But Jeff Yass has a conversation with Donald Trump. They both acknowledge they met but they won't acknowledge what they talked about. Mm. And Donald Trump's opinion of TikTok banning it in the United States changed. Mm. And that's that just one potential mm. investor. There could that's be right. all sorts of massive people buying up this stock, potentially incurring a favor with the Correct. next president of the United that's States. That's right, because nobody buys this stock because it looks like a good investment, right? People ask us as, as, as financial reporters, hey, what should I do with my 401k? And I always tell people, this is not my jam. I can't advise you on that. And nobody's advising anybody to buy true social stock, like your or whatever it's called, Trump Media stock. That's it, that's just a weird uh, company that doesn't mean anything. Now, for many years, Amazon did not make a profit, but you knew something was happening there. It was a bet on the idea that that Jeff Bezos was very smart and probably smarter than most people, and was going to find a way to make money. And ahead he did. Of the game. Yes, yeah, correct. No one's saying that. Nobody's Donald saying Trump. that about Donald Trump. You, you can't tell me you're ahead of the game when you're selling Bibles and gold sneakers. That is not right, a person right. that has a good idea. Right, that's okay, right. Okay, but, but the craziest thing is, there's a market for it. Yes. Mm -hmm. So is Donald Trump not the luckiest guy in the world that there's even a market for the Bibles or the shoes or the, or fact, the, that, or the fact that he has a publicly traded company 
of a, that, that does nothing, that loses tens of millions of dollars, and the whole company is just him crazy posting. And the investors in the media company are, I just saw today, like mostly Republican donors, someone with a questionable relationship to the Russian oligarchs. Like, mm -hmm. not a surprising <laughs> list of people. And I, I do think it's a little... I don't know, maybe self-sabotaging on Trump's part that he's taking money pe money from people who could be giving to his campaigns mm -hmm. and ultimately funding a bunch of his legal fights and instead directing them to meme stocks and a media company. Or it's company. the ultimate way that they're yeah. giving money to his campaign, it's right? Telling. You he buy the stock, Trump anything. sells into it, and guess what they can do? Write off their losses. Mm -hmm. well, they can't write also, off a campaign contribution. You're also able then to max out on the political side, mm -hmm. and then you've also got right. another avenue for funding this stuff. And I mean, again... And you can do it without anyone knowing your name. Exactly. Yeah. And I think the influence piece that you've pointed to time and again is so important, because the thing that Congress loves to talk about is who was Hunter Biden doing business with? Mm -hmm. And the thing that Democrats often come back with, which I do think is a fair question, is, okay, cool, do oversight of Hunter Biden's business. Also do oversight of Jared Kushner and the inf investments he's gotten from the Saudis and the deals that they were doing potentially as he was leaving the White House, but, but was involved in foreign diplomacy. I mean, all of this stuff is involved with each other. And you've got to, right. like, it's worth looking and, into. And Jared, Kushner point, Jared Kushner served in the not, White House. Not also a guy ahead of his game, right? Correct. If you're the government, no. if, you're, if you're the Saudi <laughs> wealth fund, you got $2 billion to invest, you've got a lot of choices yeah. in the world. Like, you can find the best investors anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. Jared Kushner's not on the top. 500,000 of the world's best investors. So, you know, whatever. All right, well, let's talk about President Biden, Roy, because today, another example, should be a great day for him. We got a bang up jobs report, which yet again shows what an extraordinary economic recovery we've had. Yeah. Clearly, the economy is strong, but from a political standpoint, it's still a challenging political story because we have an overhang of inflation and life's expensive for people. So how does the president kind of navigate this and, and get that positive message out like clockwork? That's like Joe Biden clockwork. Calls, so I know. So we got Mr. TV. President, I'm, I'm looking for advice for Roy for you. Stephanie, and, be quiet. Don't you talk about me right now on TV, Stephanie. Why does this always happen with us? Always, always. I think the president, I think the inflation and job news is indicative of what has been happening in the entirety of the Biden administration, which is good news that is able to be spun into something that means nothing, when the mm -hmm. truth is that they've done a lot of monumental policies and a lot of monumental things. Mm -hmm. And I think it's more about how do you get people to understand why this is good? Mm -hmm. And I think that there's a degree, there's a lack of what Trump has that I think Biden and them did not have in 2020 was the ability to simplify things. And mm -hmm. politics is not simple. It is a very complicated thing. But because Trump is so binary and mm -hmm. good, bad, lock up, wall, we will do and it. And willing to not tell the truth. Correct. Correct. And the truth is wordy. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And yes. the truth yes. is not a bumper. The truth is not Dow hits a record. Right. The yeah. truth is complicated. Yeah. And I think that's what the administration continues to struggle with. I do not know how they do that. And, and then on top of that, you're still fighting the argument about age, which I've never understood because mm -hmm. the other dude is only four years what, younger, yeah. two years younger than you. But this is so, the question, right? Is like, how do they show it, not tell it mm -hmm. on infrastructure, on the way that they've capped insulin prices at 35 bucks? Like that stuff matters. Okay, to but people. here's the wordiness problem, right? Because I want to turn and say, but look, the president can't control inflation, but you want to look at the camera and say, but look what he has done. He is trying to cap credit card late fees at eight dollars. Mm -hmm. He is trying to crack down on mortgage closing costs. He is trying to tackle excess fees on college loans and student loan borrowers and reining in the rental market. That Bank doesn't fees. fit. Mm -hmm. In a bumper right. sticker. So how does the president get this into the American psyche? Because people are going, man, life's so expensive. Yeah, the thing and President Trump, to... former president, hasn't offered any no, economic no solution. solutions. No solution. In fact, him saying, I'm going to slap tariffs, that's yeah, only going to worsen inflation. But it's, it's, it's actually that on every topic, right? Whatever you think Joe Biden didn't do well enough on, I'm not sure with the exception of lowering your taxes, which is a very big one, <laughs> and deregulation, which is a very big one to corporations and, and CEOs, that anything would have been done better by Donald Trump. He just, he wasn't better at any of that stuff. He he meant it. Remember there were times we were covering Infrastructure Week every time it happened, <laughs> and he derailed it all within three hours of launching it because mm -hmm. he'd tweet that somebody's yeah. fired or he's changing some law. That's the thing. Donald Trump is binary, but he's the one thing that is working against Joe Biden is that the price of an egg is more expensive than it was mm -hmm. a few years ago. Inflation is coming under control. 
but prices aren't going backwards because prices don't go backwards. It's, it's, and, and if prices were going backwards in our economy, that would actually be a really bad thing on many levels for our economy. But you're paying more for an egg. Well, you're paying more for a tomato. And, and that's, the cost of housing and the cost of child care continues yes. to go up. And for a lot of folks, mm -hmm. like myself included, those are your biggest budget right. lines. And there just aren't things right. that the president can do anything about. And, they are, not, and they're tied to the cost of labor. Housing. But he's yeah. trying to. Yeah, he's trying, and it's a really hard argument to make because you're trying to tell people the thing that they feel is real for their lived experience, they're, they're wrong. Correct. They're wrong. The Correct. economy is good. The economy is great. And if someone told me that, I'd be like, well, it must be good for someone else because it's not good but for them. But you said the two I hear things there. Constantly. The thing mm -hmm. that you feel yeah. and the thing that is your lived experience right now are diverging. Your lived experience is a better economic reality than the vibe. Yeah. And that's the disconnect is that we do a okay. lot of stuff on vibe. So right as now. we're yeah. saying this right now, on Twitter, they're going to be going nuts, saying it's the media's fault. Yeah. You're talking down the economy. You're convincing the American people that the economy sucks. You're to blame. But it's actually the lived experience. Yeah, I really think that it's hard to tell someone who is struggling that everything is OK. And I don't know how you're able to flip that and what Biden can't afford to do, at least what their campaign has seemingly not been interested in doing, is going, yeah, you're right. It is bad. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.